So yo, Vicky, otra vez. It's me, Vicky, again. Um, okay, in today's video, we're going to uh, go back to the GCSE test that we've been doing, because uh, I know uh, lots of you are quite keen to check your level. So I'm doing these videos. It may take a little bit of time because it's uh, this is a, a genuine test that we're doing. It's not just things I've made up. I've um, I've adapted them slightly, but um, you know it is basically a test. Things you'd be expected to know if you did a GCSE in Spanish. Uh, so in this one, which is the third one of the videos, and at the end I'm going to put them all on a playlist. Uh, so it'll be there as a, you know if you wanted to go back to it a month later. They'll all be there, one, two, three, four, etc. And you'll be able to go through them one by one uh, all together. So you may want to just store them up to that or you may want to do them as you go along. That's up to you. If you're interested in doing a GCSE, you know, I can point you in the right direction for that to do. An inter if you're in Spain, you can do an international GCSE in Spanish in Alicante. I can prepare you for it. Um, uh, but I can't do the actual exam here, but I've, I've prepared several students uh, for this exam and they've all passed. Not only passed, but passed with very, very good grades. Okay, like A++, etc. So anyway, so in this video we're doing numbers and time. So you might think, oh, numeros, facile, <laughs> you know, maybe numbers are easy, maybe you know all the numbers, maybe you know how to tell the time. But you'll see as we go through the examples, uh, what I've, I've realised is, uh, and I realised this a long time ago, not just doing this video, to pass a GCSC, um, you just have to be aware of what they're looking for. So you, you might know a million things about numbers. But if you don't know the things that they're looking for, then you may fail, you may struggle. I know, you know, we have to find out what are they looking for. They, they're normally looking for the oddities of not only the numbers, but anything. So they're normally looking for the little exceptions. They want you to know those. Okay, and that work, I think, has already come out in a couple of videos that we've done and it come out in this one. I'm going to do it slightly different this time. Uh, these are the numbers, or set. there's a couple of sentences down at the end. You need a pen and a piece of paper. You need to pause the video, get yourself a pen and a, a book or a piece of paper to write on. Because these are the numbers that you're expected, and the ex, uh, sentences, if you like, that you're expected to know. Now, uh, yeah, so pause the video. Write them down or take a photo of them so that you've got them and then, of course, do them. Uh, write out the answers. You need to write them out in full, the numbers in full. And then in a moment, I'll be going through the answers. So we've got 16, 23, 34, 101, 506, 702, 950, 200 books. 190, 100,000, 1,000 pounds, a million pounds. I was born in 1946. It's not true. I was not that old. Not yet. Uh, the four people stayed on the fourth floor. Now, I have noticed in a couple of things that have come up, they definitely want you to know these ordinal numbers, fourth, first, second, third, fourth, etc. There is, a, as a, and as I've said in other videos, all these things that uh, we uh, this test involves, I think you'll find that I've done a video on most of them. So uh, if you uh, search through my video, in my channel, where the little search magnifying glass, you put, put ordinal numbers or just numbers, uh, all the tutorials uh, that deal with those will come up and that should help you because if, if you're struggling, because you may think you know the numbers, but it's funny, sometimes like the bigger numbers, like 506, you know, these are the things, especially the fines, I think, are difficult. 500 is difficult. Also, bear in mind that when you come to do a GCSC, uh, they won't only expect you to say them correctly. If you have to write them down, 
quite often they have little accents. You have to remember your accent for your GCSE. I don't think it would make you fail the GCSE, but it might make the difference between getting an A star or just an A. And we want an A star star, don't we? Or A plus plus. You know, you want the best uh, grade that you can get, obviously. I think um, I mean, it'd be lovely to get a B. It'd be lovely to just pass it, but um, it's nice. It, it'd be a shame uh, to just miss out on that extra little grade just because you'd forgotten an accent. So... I hope you've done them now because I'm going to hold up the answers now. Okay, so let's look at the answers. Number 116 is DFE says. See the accent on the second E. Numero dos, 23. Venti tres. There's an accent on the tres, on the E. Absolutely no idea why, to be honest, but there you go. It's there, so it's just something to remember. Numero tres, trenta y cuatro. Now remember, when you if you read it out slowly, it's trenta y cuatro. But if you were saying it normally, it would should really come out trenta y cuatro. Again, I explained that in my tutorial on numbers. A hundred and one, ciento uno. So anything that's a hundred and something is ciento. Uh, numero cinco, this is the one that my students mainly forget, the 500. All the fives are difficult, like the 15, quince, and then 500, quinientos. And if it's 506, it's quinientos seis, no and, okay? 702, seticientos dos, no and. Uh, 950, again, don't use and when we're in the hundreds in Spanish. 950. Okay, if we're saying 200 books, we would say 200 libros. Okay, if we're saying 190, we will say 190. If we're saying 100,000, we will say... Cien mil. If we're saying a thousand books, oh, sorry, a thousand pounds, this is mil libras. So remember the difference between books, which is libros, and libras, which is pounds. So mil libras. Numero doce, un millón de libras, a million pounds. Uh, and then in numero trece, so notice that with million, we do say un million, whereas with the others, like a thousand, a hundred, we don't say un or una or anything, only with the million. Numero trece, uh, I was born in, uh, in 1946, which in Spanish they say, I was born in 1946. Nació, again, remember the accent on the end of the pre en 1946. Okay, so saying it, it's not um, 1946, you're not saying that, you're saying 1946. And the last one, the four persons stayed on the fourth floor. So, las cuatro personas. And it's las, uh, because personas are feminine. Las cuatro personas se quedaron. They stayed. Quedarse is to stay. En el cuarto piso. So, on the fourth floor. Now, you could say cuarta en la cuarta planta. That's another word for floor. So you can, but that's feminine. So it'd be la cuarta planta or el cuarto piso. Vale? How did you do? How did you get on with those? Right, let's look at the time now. Now, hopefully you know how to tell the time. Generally, you'll find again with these, 
It's more not about just telling the time, it's about the little quirky bits about telling the time and how to say, like in the morning, in the evening, etc., which we'll see. If you don't know how to tell the time in Spanish before you do this, you should uh, look at my tutorial on telling the time in Spanish. Okay, so here are the English uh, sentences that you need to translate. Number one, oh, so you need to write these down. Number one, it's four o'clock in the morning. Number two, it's 11 at night. Remember, the o'clock is optional. So I've said four o'clock in the morning, but I could have just said it's four in the morning. It's 6.15 in the evening. It's 10 to seven in the morning. The train leaves at one o'clock and the class is at quarter to four in the afternoon. So that's your sentences. You need to write them down or just pause the video and look at them on there. And you need to try have a go at translating those. Hello, <laughs> you're back in the room because now I'm going to read you the answers. Okay, so number one. Son las cuatro de la madrugada. Now, madrugada, I don't know if you know that or not, but uh, it's the early hours of the morning. I mean, you could also say son las cuatro de la uh, mañana. But if you were in a GCSE and you used to madrugada, I think you'd get an extra little point there. I think that, see, so this is about, there's often different ways you can say things, but if you use something a little bit different, I'm sure when those papers are marked, these are things that go towards the better mark. So, numero dos. Son las once de la noche. Now, you could say son las once en punto de la noche. También, either is fine. So, numero tres. Son las seis y cuarto. So, it's six and a quarter. Or you can use quince, son las seis y quince de la tarde, in the evening or in the afternoon. Tarde can mean evening or afternoon. Again, I do believe there's a tutorial on my channel for the parts of the day in Spanish. Numero cuatro, son las seis y cincuenta. Yeah? Or you can say son las siete menos diez. Either por la mañana or de la mañana. That would not be madrugada because madrugada really, I would use madrugada. Six would be the latest, the very latest that you would use madrugada. Uh, after six, it's more or less just normal morning. But before six, it's the early hours of the morning uh, or the wee hours of the morning as we would say. Okay, numero cinco, el tren sale a la una. So remember, anything that's to do with one o'clock is la, not las, singular. Uh, y numero seis, la clase es a las cuatro menos cuatro. Uh, again, you could say menos quince. Oh, you could even go back to the three and say a las tres y cuarenta y cinco at 3.45. There's all your choices. They've got quite a lot of choices. Okay, how did you do? So let me know how you did. Um, I'd be interested to know because, uh, especially if you've been a student of mine, because I do believe any of my students, certainly if they've gone up to level three, would pass a GCSE with a little bit of tuition pointed in the right direction easily with a fantastic mark. Of course, for those of you that have learned Spanish elsewhere and are watching my tutorials, thank you. Uh, that's more difficult to say because I don't know about the, the basics you've had. But of course, you can also, if you haven't got time for classes or you can't come for classes or you don't want to do Zoom classes, uh, you can buy my books on Amazon and go through the books uh, at home in your own time. Okay, so the next video, as it says here, will be negatives and pronouns. Gracias por mara. Uh, I really mean that. I really am grateful to everybody who watches. Please give me a thumbs up if you found the video useful. 
Of course, as I always ask, please subscribe if, if you feel like it, because then you'll get the notification of new videos. Um, and that's it. So, que tu Dios vaya contigo y te veo en el próximo video.